Hey, what's going on, sweet friends? Today, I have an amazing story to share with you guys. So you've probably heard the riches are in the niches, niche, niche, whichever one you choose, or that you need to actually pick a niche to stand out. Well, today I have an amazing story around how selecting a niche can help you regardless of where you are in business. So the young lady we have here today is amazing. Not only does she have a niche, but she's also power that you can do anything regardless of your age. So she started a small side hustle, which then turned into something a whole lot more from 1k days to national press to being on the front cover of the page in her states magazine this young lady is on a roll a cinnamon roll literally and we're going to get into that a little bit more today i have with us a very special young lady monique ivory of grandma's hand sweetery hi monique how are you doing today morning how are you i'm <laughs> doing awesome awesome good a good day to you yes <laughs> So tell me something. Uh, tell me a little bit about when did you start your business, the name, and, and when did you start? We actually started in 2008 under a different name. Um, it was uh, Grace and Glory Sweet Treats. Uh, we did only cupcakes back then. Um, and then as the years grew, I figured out what I kind of wanted. Um, I went from the cupcakes, then I went to... Uh, celebration cakes, and then went on to wedding cakes. Um, and then for my job, we got furloughed. So it kind of slowed down from there. Yeah. And then in 2018, we changed our name. There you go. So I, I feel a lot of people have that start. You know, sometimes we start off doing a lot of things. Some of my um, older students that have been around and then we we do all the big fancy stuff. And then we say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm done with this. I'm just going to give the people what they want because a lot of times bakers, they're always in creative mode. So it's like they want to create, create, create. And then they sit back and say, you know what? I need to just focus on what's making me money. So in, in 2018, you revamped the business. And then what did you change the name to? The name of our business is called Grandma's Hand Sweetery. All right. Awesome sauce. So after that, your primary focus, what dessert do you focus on now primarily or specialize in? We specialize in cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. Yes. <laughs> go. Yes, indeed. All right. I love it. I love it. Now, this is a podcast for those listening, unless you're on a YouTube channel, for those who are actually watching this, you are a beautiful spring chicken. Some people may say, you know, it's it, it's a little too late. However, we know that is not the case. But Miss Monique, how old are you? I'm 50. You are 50. Okay, so girl, you are 50 and rocking it. So you starting this business, you rocking and rolling. And then let's see what type of baking business do you have? Are you a cottage baker? Did you start off as a cottage baker? We started off as a cottage baker, but then uh, we moved on to um, other avenues. And then now we're, uh, we now have a food truck. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yes. All right. So started off humble beginnings just from home. And then you like switched everybody. up. Yeah. Like everybody. Absolutely. And which I love home baking business anyways but so you have a home baking business which is doing amazing you're doing your cinnamon rolls and then I know about a year or so I actually uh well I've known you for a lot longer but when I revamped some things in my business I had the opportunity to have more of a one-on-one -on -one with you and you sat down and you had some goals and I know you really wanted to grow in business uh joyful plug Miss Monique is a member of the entrepreneur community which I'm so so happy about. Uh, the entrepreneur community is my monthly group coaching program, which helps bakers all around the world just to up level their business, to raise their prices and to just walk more in their purpose. So this was a side hustle and you had came to me with a goal and you wanted more corporate orders. You wanted to get yourself out there more and you wanted to raise your income. And so we went over some great marketing tips. And one of those is that you really started getting active in the community. So tell me about the pop-ups that you attend and how much fun are those? 
Oh my goodness. The pops up, the pop-ups are amazing. Um, in our city, we have food truck Friday and they allow not only the food trucks to be there, but they also allow the vendors to be there, which is, uh, uh, either your product or whatever you're, you're trying to sell up under a tent, a 10 by 10 tent. And, this was new for me uh, to be under a tent, not like in a building with the table and it's dressed up. Uh, it was very different. You had crowds coming in, um, deciding if they wanted your dessert. And by coming every Friday, they get used to you. At this point, after a month or so, my crowds got larger and larger and larger and larger. And, you know, I never changed my menu. I, you know, always bring a special item but my menu always stayed the same. I love that. I love that because with so many people, I tell them it's all about consistency, you know, and like you said, it started off small, but eventually it grows. We have to allow things time to grow, but they'll never grow if we start and stop or if we start and we do so halfway. So you were very strategic. We sat down, we mapped out a plan and you were putting yourself out there. You were putting yourself out there at the the pop-ups, you were partnering with other people and events. And I remember that you had a goal. When you first started as a side hustle, you made like a couple thousand a year, but then you had a goal and you reached that goal and you had your first 1K day. $1,000 $1,000 in sales, uh-huh. <laughs> right? So this is uh-huh. yes. no, no wedding cakes, no big items, $1,000 in nope. sale with a niche specialty project. How did you feel when you reached that first goal? Um, it was exciting. It was more than exciting. It, I was, I felt blessed that, you know, the community and everyone loved my desserts enough to come out and continue to support me week after week after week. Um, so when I met my goal, it was like, I could really do this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like a, a, a belief, unbelief. I, I can actually do this. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you do hard work, it always pays off consistency. Um, by me doing it with staying with the same menu, um, my products were there every week. So people were allowed to try my three products Plus, if you wanted the new product that week, which always changed, um, they were allowed to do that too. That gives them, you know, if you want a piece of cake or, um, I don't know, a different type of cobbler or a different cinnamon roll, it allowed them to do that as well. But the other products were still there. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. So you really started marketing your business in a big way, which I love. So tell me, how has marketing helped you? What what new things have you started to do or started to notice? Um, by using the secret sauce um, that we learned <laughs> in the academy. <laughs> um, it drew in um, not only the corporate orders, but it allowed me to continue to get other orders outside of the Friday night market uh, events. So it helps helps me keep my business afloat uh, by getting the other orders. And you know, can't you know you don't always want to I guess put your cookies in one basket. Yeah. Um, but you know, even though I had the Friday night market, you never want to be just there. You want to make sure that you are based on the secret sauce, you always want to have it (laughs) somewhere else. Let's just say that. I understand. Now, now I'll go ahead and and share a little bit, but by secret sauce, one, one of the things you mean, I'm very adamant about my students, not just focusing on social media, about them listing themselves on other places. So, and, and you're able to be found online. Yes, I am online at grandma's hands dash hand, grandma's dash hands.com. Um, not only I'm on, you know, social media, but, you know, there's other avenues as well. Exactly. And so it's amazing because sometimes people think they're posting on social every day. They're posting on social every day. And I'm like, look, social media is not the only way, you know, some of the, some of the free tips I give for people out there is there are sites like, uh, Thumbtack, there are sites like Yelp. But what happens is that when you start putting yourself in, on these other sites, other places like that I like to call secret sauce, you start realizing that you're attracting people who want to buy. 
You know, people go on social because they want to be social. Eventually, as they get to learn you, they don't mind. But when you start putting yourself online, you start to be found on places like Google. You know, you start, right, you start ranking at the top of your business. You start being able to work with businesses like Yelp. And those are some of the things that we go over inside. And I'm super happy that you took advantage of that because it it worked for you. You rank number one in your area. Yes. Number one. You wow. So how does that feel organically? No paid ads, nothing like that. You're ranking number one as a home baker amongst all these other businesses that are in your area. It's for it's it's I I don't know have words. I really don't um to be ranked um against some of the other bakers that are here that has reviews that is in the thousands and I rank number one. When you look for cinnamon rolls in my area, I'm number one and it's, it feels good. It really does. And so with ranking number one, that means you're getting calls. You're getting calls from people, not on social media, who are, no social wanting, media. Who are wanting to buy, who are wanting to mm-hmm. do business with you. And yes. even from that and from marketing yourself, you actually got some corporate orders also. I did. I did. I've gotten two corporate orders and I'm working on a third and possibly a fourth on tomorrow. (laughs) Wow. Yes. So you are doing really big things. So that is one of the things I love about you. If you don't mind sharing, is there anything in the entrepreneur community being a member that you've learned that's really your favorite? Is it the community? Is it the people in the group? Any particular lesson? Um, the lessons are awesome. Um, though that is invaluable. Um, the cost is invaluable. Um, I've been through programs that are three, four times as high as your program and the, the, the verbiage and things that is offered in our programs, it, the community, the help, the The students, when they ask a question, everybody just kind of dives in. Well, this is my opinion. This is this and this. And it kind of helps the person that's asking the question inside of the community to get a better understanding. For somebody like me that don't so much know everything, it helps me a lot. Um, I I am very happy to share, whether it's a recipe or whatever the case may be or what it has worked for me. I'm very happy to share, but then you have 200 plus other people yeah. that has chimed in on this question and you're like, oh, look at all the people who love me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that. And, you know, I feel, I feel like, wow, this is a different type of community that I've ever been in, you know, yes, there are communities out there, but it's, it's a different type. If it, if that makes sense, it's really different. Yeah. You know, there's not, everybody wants to jump in and celebrate your wins and ask how you got there and what can I do different? That's for me and my lane. You know, they're not trying to say, oh, I want to do cinnamon rolls, but what can I do for me? You know, and that's a very, very important to me, you know, that you understand. Absolutely. I I will say we are blessed, Um, even for those listening who are because I don't want anybody to feel uh, pressured. I just had to share this young lady's story, especially since she was uh, my student. But I mean, if you're not a member, we would love to have you. However, one of the key things from this is that people fail to realize how important accountability is. You know, when we're younger, we always have a parent. There's someone telling us, hey, do this, do this, do this. But when you're an adult, you know, no one parents you. So when people are like, I'm not consistent on social media, when you have a coach, a business coach or someone who you trust, that's a person that's showing up, that's rooting for you, that's going in your DM saying, hey, y'all know I will DM you. Where's your reel? Why haven't you posted this or or take this down? It doesn't match your brand colors. So what did you say? <laughs> Where's my hashtags? <laughs> That's right. Where's where are your hashtags? How is this gonna perform without some hashtags? So yeah, I think that's what that you you have accountability. And to me, accountability makes all the difference. So I love that. I'm super excited about that. So you also had another goal when you joined the entrepreneur community, I which did. was you wanted a food truck and I you did. just recently got your wish. So tell us about that. 
I have always wanted a bakery and I had to realize that my dream and my goal wasn't going together. Mm -hmm. So I had to recalculate and what I came up with was a food truck. So we did our soft opening on Thursday and it was so awesome. It really was. It was, it is a literally bakery on wheels. I have an oven, proofers, sinks, you name it. I have everything in my food truck and I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to have it. I love that. I love that. Yeah. A lot of times people think the a bakery, a brick and mortar is like what people aspire to. But now there's so many other ways, nothing against a brick and mortar, not knocking a brick and mortar. But with the way the world is going, there are so many other ways to have businesses. You have people who have campers, trailers. You have people who have ghost kitchens. Like we have a student, uh -huh. Miss Lenore, ghost kitchen, meaning that you don't open the kitchen to anyone. You're only using the kitchen to prepare. However, you still have a kitchen facility you're no longer a home-based business. And then like you, we have people that have the full-blown trucks and people who do third-party platforms. There are so many other avenues when you feel like, okay, I, I want to grow. I want to take a step out of the home. Now we even have what's called podpreneurs, people that take pods and they uh -huh. renovate pods and they turn those into buildings. So they're like portable storage buildings that people just turn into their own bakery and you can pick them up and drop them and take them anywhere so I think the future of baking looks very different of the future of retail and how we do business however you picked the truck you wanted a truck you went after your goal and I'm so happy that you were able to accomplish it and on the way there you are getting pressed like crazy so you're definitely the the true definition of it never being too late to do what it is that you want to do, but also to focus on what it is that you love. I think too often we do things because we think the money is here, the money is there, but you're doing what you love. You love making, yes, you love making cinnamon rolls. I love that. So you've been featured in Memphis Voyage and you just made the front page of your paper. How did that feel to be on the front page? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, uh, Actually, this is my second time. Whoa, okay, excuse me. <laughs> wow. Um, I made front page up in 2019. And then again, um, just a couple weeks ago, front page, I happened to be in, in Kroger's and I was on front page. I knew that it would come maybe in June, but no, <laughs> no, not really. They, they hit you. They was like, look, we, we can't wait. It's now. The time is yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's now. It's now. And um, I'm thankful. Yes, I was in Voyager and uh, VIP Magazine, which is here, a local magazine here. And uh, I'm very thankful. I'm, I'm very thankful for the podcast as well. Oh, you're amazing. I love for my students to get press. You guys know I, I love press for my business, but I also share inside my membership. I like to prepare my students to have press themselves. I believe in all of you guys to get brand photo shoots. I like you guys to look a certain way. And even when you can't see it and you're like, okay, well, I'm just a home baker. Why do I, why do I need that? I'm sure you can share the importance of that because you have to stay ready. That way, when people come to you, exactly. Yeah. What'd you say? You got to be ready. When, when someone comes to you, you don't want to be like, oh, wait, wait a minute. I got to schedule an appointment. And then the appointment may be two weeks out and yeah. they might not know how to do stylish folks for, you know, food. And then it's, yeah, you, you have to be ready. You have it's, to be. It's gonna, you're gonna, you have to take the time, plot it out and make sure that your pictures are ready. And I, I love the fact that you're willing to, to do that. You always have the most beautiful <laughs> photos. The cream cheese is always drooling off the icing and you always look so cute with your little pearls. I love it. So what advice would you give to someone who is thinking, maybe it's too late for me to start or I'm afraid to niche down. I don't just want to pick one to two products to focus on. Well, if you are afraid to start, don't be. Yeah. All you have to do is put one foot in front of the other and start. If you get knocked down, that's a lesson. Trust me, get back up, start again. If you get knocked down again, get up and start again because you can't go 
in life and not know that you got knocked down because that's part of your 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 journey, your road. Keep going, keep going. If this is really your dream, then make it your dream. Um, what was the other question? I, I love that. No, girl, you nailed it. You nailed it totally. <laughs> and what about those who are afraid to to niche down to say I don't I don't know about the small products. I was afraid that I would lose my clientele uh, with the individual items. And that's where I wanted to go was the individual items because a lot of people are very health conscious. They, they're they just wanting a dessert. Uh, and that's where I kind of wanted to go. Um, I just didn't know that's where I wanted to go. And I can make them look just as beautiful as my cakes and things of that nature. Uh, in regards to the cinnamon rolls, the cinnamon rolls was just, my husband wanted one and he just was <laughs> kept talking about his grandmama's cinnamon rolls. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me get on this. And we had furlough and it, it was on, you know, I got laid off from my job and I just kept going. I'm like, these cinnamon rolls suck. <laughs> So I created my own recipe. So a little bit of here and a little bit of here and a little bit there, it gave me the good, good. It, the good, good. The That's good, what you good. call it, girl, yes. the good, good. I love yes. that. And, and they do not, we all suck when we start, but guess what? We have to, uh, we have to embrace all the, all the suckiness, embrace all that. And those cinnamon rolls actually got you featured in American Cake Decorating Magazine as well, if I recall, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> so see, that's where practice comes from. So you share a, a, a slightly altered, a, a different version. However, anyone um, who's interested, they can definitely look up your name with ACD and they'll be able to find a friendly version that you share with the magazine in case they want to make yes. cinnamon rolls just as delicious as yours. So I love that. I'm super excited. So what are your future plans from now? We're focusing on the, the truck, corporate orders and yes. getting money. We're, we're focused on the, um, the truck. Um, I am, I'm, I'm for the, the hours that I'm available, I am completely booked for April, May, and most of June for the All food right truck. All right now, booked and blessed. We are booked in advance. Come through, honey. Um, in regards to uh, what I want in the future, I've already peeped out another truck. Oh, snaps. Uh, I want the truck to be a little bit smaller than what we have now for the events that cannot house Gigi. So the, and my truck is called Gigi. So <laughs> I, I just wanted a little bit smaller truck that we could do the same things in it, but just in a smaller batches. I love it. I love it. So what from, from something that started off as a side hustle to now full-blown truck, to more trucks in the future. Gosh, I love it. I love your story. So thank you so much for sharing. I am so happy for you. And not to mention the fact, I will, I will mention the fact also, not only do you have 1K days, but I don't share folks' exact numbers because I don't believe folks should be in people's business. But however, within one year, I got to witness you multiplied your income by four by four, which is which four times, which means if you're listening to this right now, let's say you had a goal to make $50,000 a year. What would it look like in one year if you 4X that? Or let's say you made around 10,000. What would it look like in one year if you 4X that? Or if you made 100,000, what would it look like if you went four times up? Monique 4X her income in one year year and y'all I am so happy for this young lady thank you so much for joining us today Monique now I'm ready because we have some lightning round questions to ask you you ready <laughs> all right let's do it darling what is your favorite color pink okay it is pink it's pink okay. <laughs> what is your favorite dessert lemon ice cream by bluebell what Yes. Bluebell homemade ice cream. <laughs> That's my shit. It is. Bluebell ice. And, and it doesn't come out very often. 
You got to watch it in the summertime. It does come out. It, sometimes it even come out as something else, but it, there is a lemon version. Yes. Okay. We, it's so good. Okay. We're going to be on the lookout for that. Who is your celebrity crush? And don't tell me Cicely Jesus. Ty okay. Cicely Tyson. Wait, crush? Cicely Tyson? No, no, I know no. it sounds weird as in crush, but oh my goodness, I love me. So Cicely Tyson. Okay. I know she's a woman. Okay, I was going to oh, hold, hold on, because because I can't edit this now. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this one more time. <laughs> okay, Miss Monique, some people may be looking for you to say it. Okay, you know what? We're going to let Man. It. It's, okay. It's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. I am all about diversity and inclusion, so I feel you, honey. I'm going to let you keep your answer, because I don't want nobody to come for me. All right. <laughs> no, they don't have to come for you. They can come for me. It's just, it's just something about her strength. Amen. So is it, I, I, I probably could find uh, somebody to throw out there. However, she has been on my heart for like the last year. Yeah, she, she, so. she was a, a, a beautiful soul from what a lot of us could tell from the, the legacy that she left. And I can see it because she was a true testament too that it doesn't matter what age you are, honey, you can get up there. That's it. That's it for yep. you. Yeah. She, she still worked. I mean, as long as Tyler Perry hired her, she was in everything. So yeah, I, I love that. What's your favorite book? Um, gosh, gosh, uh, no, no, I'm a, I'm a romance novelist. So I don't, I just 50, read it. All. 50 Shades of Grey. I have read that too. Oh, snaps. Okay. <laughs> I've read, I've read that uh, a couple times oh my goodness yes oh okay all right then all right and what is your favorite kitchen utensil whisk whisk whip it baby oh whisk Same that, it is not just it's not just a whisk it's the flat whisk oh okay girl okay all right now <laughs> I love it I love it Miss Monique Thank you so much. I so enjoyed talking to you today and hearing your story. I know that it is truly going to inspire someone and I can't wait to see all the great things you do in the future, darling. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, beautiful.